So we have yeah another uh, full house design for the Porsche building in Dubai. So you have um, basically a uh, importing of forms into into other countries based on the the shifting and moving around of architects. So you have forms like this for Dubai, and then this is also another design for Dubai. So we are looking at the inside context and is this being contextual or is this fitting in into the cityscape of Dubai? And then coming back to Singapore, so Levinsky's reflections have definitely inspired a lot of us to look forward to something new in our cityscape. But is it moving? Although there are some interest in it, but is this what Singapore you know, should be, especially after we have seen like Iron Orchard coming up, Central um, at Orchard, all these new and exciting ideas being fulfilled in Singapore's um, landscape. But is the urban uh, design in Singapore moving towards the correct direction? So, being, so this brings us back to the idea of being you know, in place and place and placelessness. So what defines a truly Singapore's place? But what really defines a place in, to begin with? Because places are not just defined by buildings, they are defined actually together with the inhabitants. So it is actually what um, places are made of. It's actually made of the people who are living within it. So um, are we really sticking at a utopian city where you know everything works well within the boundaries of the wall and everything is get uh, fulfilled? Or you know, or are we looking at a formula to a good city design where it's really about economic agenda, learn, live, work, and play? That's what I mentioned from the URA's vision. Right, or are we looking at dynamic streets or etc. etc. So as that exactly, people are we looking at in Singapore? So from that, maybe I'll share a little bit of my little vision of what I feel a well planned Singapore should be. Uh, besides having nice, you know, nature in the city, we have nice architecture, good makan food, of course everyone likes it. So and then buses that come on time definitely. And then white shopping boulevard or even a good number of parking lots or maybe no ERP. This is, that is perhaps my vision of what I feel an ideal Singapore should be. But, um, so this brings us back to the question where urban planners work. Do they work from the top down approach or do they work from the bottom up approach? Have they actually asked the community on what they feel is right for the spaces? Maybe some little voices may help from, from the community. So maybe we have um, in this uh, central park visual of a good mix of human spaces with the, with the greenery. So are we actually, so definitely with the fulfillment of like Gardens by the Bay and all this exciting new greenery that we can see around the Marina Bay area, are we moving towards uh, having a city where we have the greenery and the green pockets within us and between the spaces that we are living in? Or how do we really define the people's spaces? So this is actually a question which we all should ask ourselves as architects. So how do we define and what defines a people's space? So um, maybe I'll share with everyone on this particular um, initiative that was started in New York. Uh, Project for Public Spaces, they have actually got a, a website online. So their website is www.pps.org. So this is actually a group. This is actually a group that is um, based in Oh, sorry, it's okay, she's providing a little bit of 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 a little and this group is actually a group of volunteers who are really thinking about, oh, we should not let our city spaces be governed by authorities. You know, community should be part of it. So they actually go around New York and they look at pockets of spaces and they actually ask the communities of what they envision spaces to be. So spaces should not be driven by a certain agenda or maybe, okay, this is going to be a parking space, so let's make it a parking space. But they actually ask the community, what do you feel is right for your spaces? What do you want to see next to you, your house? Or what do you, see, what do you want to see when you step out from your house? So from all this questioning with the community, they actually formulate design ideas from that. And we are looking at really a bottom-up approach where the people are speaking on what they want and the authorities are listening to it. So this is actually kind of like the utopian situation which we all wish for and definitely in Singapore's context where getting public involvement I feel is actually moving towards a, a better direction for how urban design should be in Singapore. 
So like what um, Project for Public Spaces have said, it's a cumulative result of people taking bold actions to make improvements. And maybe to share a little bit of what my in my area of interest, um, for Guerrilla Lighting, it's actually another uh, non-profit group that is set up in UK. So basically because everyone, um, if we are looking at lighting design, how do we make a space interesting? Because especially when we have the new URA Lighting Master Plan, which was released. So, you know, other than how do we create some excitement in your daily streets? So what um, Guerrilla Lighting has done was that they actually do surprise Guerrilla attacks in the streets in UK or even in other parts of Europe. So what they do is that the members are all armed with torches and with the sound of air horn, the torches all came up, all, uh, are all actually switched on. So you have a street that suddenly appears right in front of you. This building which is usually in darkness suddenly just glow in the dark. So they are actually aiming to you know, eradicate that lighting and as well as to promote the, everyone's awareness towards good lighting in the spaces that everyone is living in. So Guerrilla Lighting is actually another group which is also making small, small steps. So um, coming back to the whole idea of how React actually started the DMP workshops. So React has actually uh, worked on, I think it's the third DMP, and it's still ongoing, the Design My Place workshops. So uh, recently, some of my students have actually participated in the Design My Place workshops and they feel that they have learned a lot through the, the way the workshop was conducted, through the entire scheme of works that the workshop actually put them through. So, um, can, so I will let my students actually share their experience on what they have learned about the participatory design through the workshops as well as what they feel may be possible for us to move towards in terms of the future direction. Okay, so I'll hand my mic over to the students. I'm Noel, so I'm a year two environment design student in the Master Polytechnic. So basically I'd like to share that like, understanding perspective from different individuals. As you know that the city consists of people's humans and they are they came from different backgrounds, different family, they, they, they speak different language and they are different age group, different professions. So uh, as we later back to what uh, my lecturer Sio said, whether that the urban plan is it in context, is it in the right context with the local community? So, uh, like that PBS, uh, whether they let the community have say in the, in the urban plan in their cityscape. So, uh, at the end of the day, they are the public or the community is the one who utilizes the space and make your design happen. Without them, it's just a it's just a design. Okay. So is it the public? Uh, it is a public space that uh, makes the space. So therefore, to me, to me, my opinion, their uh, comments and their point of view is actually very critical in this process. Yeah. So maybe you may design. Okay, for example, I just get some street furniture laying around these streets. So how sure are you going to be that your design will work without? Because you may just put a street furniture, but how 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 confident can you be that this item works? So to me that their opinions from the public and maybe interview to them, talk to them and walk down the street with them, perhaps you may feel something special. Uh, so like in terms of uh, that EMP which I actually participated, so at first when you go there, because uh, we are quite fortunate that we are, we are we do have some design based education. So when at first we heard about those JC proposals where they have some defining we were thinking that do you sure this could happen in reality? So sometimes everyone in different age group, different professions, they don't have a, a very interesting idea in their heads, which uh, we should not discount anyone in this public. So like uh, uh, Suyong so has shared with me this uh, organization, which is actually the IKEA. So you know they have those playgrounds where you can, uh, the kids will play, which is called the IKEA, IKEA land. So, they are actually quite so very young. So how actually if you happen to read up the they have plan is a very simple master plan for whole Singapore. And it's actually very interesting to see how they vision Singapore in their context, in their point of view. So I think that to me we should not uh, discount anyone and we should take opinions and maybe from there this uh, small inspiration and small little bubble, speech bubbles from every corner in Singapore will blossom up this uh, entire cityscape in Singapore. 
Yeah. So maybe I'll have to pass my uh, classmate again. We'll have to.